Hello, Dan McCarthy here. I'm going to talk about the commercial inspection training for HVAC. Uh, we're going to start off with some definitions, so I hope you're ready. Uh, number one, we're going to talk about an absorption system. An absorption system is a refrigerating system in which refrigerant is pressurized by pumping a chemical solution of refrigerant in absorbent and then separated by an addition of heat in a generator, then condensed, expanded, evaporated, and absorbed, reabsorbed into the absorption. Uh, and then this cycle repeats. So we've got a diagram here of how this process works, uh, an absorption system. We've got the processor over here. And as you can see, we've got the heat condenser over here, or heat consumer. Uh, we've got electrical energy coming out of the device over here. So basically this is an absorption system in case uh, it's mentioned on your report by a third party uh, expert in that field. You'll know exactly what that is then. Uh, air conditioning. Everybody knows what air conditioning is. Uh, commercial air conditioning is basically on a larger scale. You have an RTU, a rooftop unit that will have air conditioning. These happen to be side by side air conditioning units for a building. Um, basically, air conditioning is the treatment of air to control the temperature, humidity, cleanness, and it's also a distribution of that treated air. So it's a method of conveying the air that's cooled or treated into the space or the area that you want to cool. Uh, air distribution. You can see we've got a bunch of duct work going on here. Uh, we've got some vents coming off the side here coming down. This distribution system basically is a conveyance of air, um, a system of ducts and plenums, um, air handling equipment that circulates air within a space, basically. Uh, how it's done is by these ducts. Air exhaust. Uh, air exhaust units, we'll see several of these mounted on top of a commercial building. Um, this is to push air out of the building, unwanted air, and air exhaust is uh, air being removed from any space or appliance or piece of equipment uh, forced directly outside by ducts or openings. So once the air comes out of an appliance or any piece of equipment, it has to be expelled because it may have combustion particles in it or, or bad air. So this, that's what conveys through the air exhaust. Um, air handling unit. This, this is a unit mounted on the roof uh, most of the time and the air handling unit is a blower or a fan uh, used for the purpose of distributing supply air to a room, space or an area. Um, that's what this does. It's got fans in there and filters. So you'll know what this is if it comes up on your report from your third party person. Uh, air makeup. Uh, this diagram looks complicated, it's really not. Basically air makeup goes through a series of filters, um, different uh, pumps and fans. Um, air makeup is the air that is provided to replace air that is being exhausted. So in other words, the air that goes out has to be replaced. So the air makeup, or makeup air unit, it might be called, um, does this. And it can also be called a makeup air rather than an air makeup. So remember that. Appliance. There's a, that's a broad term, appliance, and it can be used for anything. Unlike a home inspection, appliances are usually stoves, refrigerators, dishwashers, dryers, uh, washing machines, things like that. Um, in an HVAC, uh, appliances can be furnaces. Appliances can be heat pumps, pumps, uh, boilers, um, as well as ovens and and uh, grills and things like that in a, in a kitchen. So remember that appliances doesn't always mean the same thing. In this case, we've got some pictures of some appliances. This is a heating unit with controls on it here that heat these different bins. You could have different foods sources in there. Um, we've got a grill. We've got a uh, gas-fired burner here. Uh, Looks like some pizza ovens on this side. So all of these are considered appliances. If someone gives you a report, an HVAC expert or a, com a company that you've hired, 
uh, says that this appliance is not working and then describes it, you'll know that the appliance is a pizza oven, a grill, a stove, a uh, warming unit, something of this nature. Okay. Barometric draft. Um, barometric draft is basically something that's put on a flue to adjust. Um, it's a balanced damper device attached to a chimney vent connector um, or fuel gas mon manifold uh, to protect combustion equipment by cooling chimney draft and controlling chimney draft. So we don't want to have too much chimney draft uh, affecting the combustion air of a gas-fired appliance. So this barometric draft calculates and uh, adjusts how much draft is entered into the flue or chimney, uh, whatever the case may be. Boiler. Uh, everyone basically knows what a boiler is. These are some huge boilers in an industry, uh, some industry, um, industrial position here. Um, looks like we've got uh, one, two, three of them listed here. A boiler is a closed heating appliance needed to supply hot water or steam for space heating, processing, or power purposes. So they can do different things rather than just produce heat. Um, these, I'm not sure exactly what these are, but uh, huge boilers, they're probably steam boilers, so you see the valves on the top up here. Uh, boilers can be used for many different things rather than producing heat. BTU basically is a British thermal unit, and that is the amount of energy it takes to heat one pound of water to one degree Fahrenheit. That's the technical term of it, so you know what a BTU is now. Combustion air. Combustion air is basically the air that is used to complete the combustion of fuel. So it's air that's mixed in with the fuel and used to combust, make a fire or produce heat for whatever appliance it's going to. So the combustion air is mixed with the fuel, whatever fuel that might be, to produce the combustion. In talking about combustion air, this is another piece of equipment from combustion air. Um, this unit has a hopper here, possibly for solid fuel feed. We've got a little pump here for the solid feed into this combustion chambers uh, are here. And the combustion chamber is basically a portion of the appliance that which combustion occurs. So these have handles on them here, so they open up. There's a little drawer here that you can pull out and clean out the products and the ash. Um, so basically, this is a chamber for combustion air and a hopper feeding it. And then we've got vents coming out the top, um, feeding in. And we've got a blower fan here that feeds combustion air into the uh, chamber. So basically, this is uh, what the combustion air and the combustion chamber all in one is. And we got commercial cookers. Uh, here again, these are appliances that uh, are used in commercial food establishments for heating and cooking food and which produce grease, vapors, steam, fumes, smoke, uh, or odors and are required to be removed. So here we've got another uh, hot plate thing sitting here with a controller on it. We've got uh, a hood with uh, gas burning stove burners here. Uh, basically anything is considered an appliance. So let's talk about hoods, cooker hoods. Uh, here's a basic cooker hood with an exhaust pipe coming out the top. And then we've got different grease traps or different racks for cleaning. Uh, there's several different kinds of cooker hoods. So we're gonna go through them just touch on them lightly, but uh, there's six types of cooker hoods that you'll see, and most people don't know that, but if it comes in a report and you have to refer to it, and someone calls out uh, a double island canopy hood, you'll know from this video what a double island canopy hood is. So we're going to run through them real quick. Um, let's start with the back shelf. Basically, the back shelf um, is attached to the back of the appliance. This happens to be a grill right here. And here's your filters um, that filter out. Uh, the back shelf hood is also referred to as a low proximity hood. 
or a sidewall hood where it's wall mounted. And this happens to be mounted on the wall, as you can see. So that's a back shelf hood. Then we've got a double island canopy hood, and you can see the size of it here. Um, notice that there's back to back, um, double island canopy hood is placed over back to back appliances or appliance lines. Uh, it's open on all sides and overhangs both the fronts and the sides of the appliances. So we've got a little overhang. You can see the front of the appliance here. It overhangs this side of it a little bit. You can see these little nozzles here. That's part of the Ansel system. And then we've got our grease traps up here. And then our vent comes out and our exhaust hood and our vent goes up and out the building here. But see, you've got back-to-back -back appliances. This other row over here that you can't quite see also has different uh, appliances, whether they be grills, burners, ovens, whatever it is. And all of the exhaust from both sides goes up and out this double island canopy hood. The next one is the eyebrow hood. And the eyebrow hood is mounted directly on the surface of the appliance, such as an oven, a dishwasher, um, above the opening doors, uh, so that the steam, smoke, fumes, vapors, odors, or whatever can be emitted. So this one happens to have a door right here that opens up. This is part of the unit, this hood here, the eyebrow, so that everything that comes out of this goes right up into the hood. Um, you'll see them on especially large dishwashing equipment, full-size stand-up dishwashing equipment, so that all the steam goes up and out. Um, this right here, I'm not sure exactly what this unit is, if that's a, a baking unit, a stainless steel baking unit. Next one we got is a Passover hood. And the Passover hood basically is uh, a freestanding form of a bookshelf hood constructed low enough to pass food over. So you're cooking your food here, as you can see on this commercial stove, and you're able to put it on a plate and pass it over the top. And this hood, as you can see, the steam being sucked in to this hood, which is mounted very low on this piece of equipment here. And we got a single island hood, canopy hood, and this basically is for a single appliance or um, one row of appliances. Um, so the single hood canopy is placed over that single appliance. It doesn't do anything but service that one piece or that one row of pieces, however, however many you can squeeze in that particular area right there. Then we've got one more, which is the wall canopy. As you can see here, it's mounted to the wall. That's hence the name wall canopy. Um, and it's, it's large enough that it services this whole grill. Um, this is a, a grill here. We've got a uh, cooktop on this side. Can't quite see what that side is, but you see the hood contains the whole assembly right there. So it does everything. Wall mounted hood, exhaust hood is mounted against the wall and above a single appliance or a line of appliances. Here again, same, same thing. You can see the duct, big large duct up here, about a two foot by two foot duct, taking everything that comes off of that whole assembly up and out in the exhaust. Compressor. Basically, the compressor is a unit that compresses gas. Uh, in other words, uh, it's a specific machine with or without accessories that compresses gas. So this is a line of compressors. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six of them here. Um, these are all compressors doing the same function. It's so basically the function is compressing gas. Condensate. Uh, this is a condensate pump discharge line. Condensate is basically the liquid that is given off from, uh, that condenses from a gas and is caused by a reduction in temperature. So we've got water forming on pipes or whatever, and usually there's a condensate drain, condensate drain, uh, condensate discharge. So you have condensate buildup in a lot of the heating situations. Um, you'll see it on windows sometimes when it's cold outside because of the temperature. Here again, it's the reduction in temperature that causes the condensate. Condenser, or condensing unit. Here's a series of condensing units that are on a rooftop. Um, you'll see the fans at the top. Here's the intake with the filters on them. Uh, the condenser is basically a heat exchanger designed to liquefy refrigerant, vapor, and removal of heat is basically the summary of a condenser.
You'll have them on your air conditioners, uh, on a commercial situation. Uh, they're much larger. And here we've got a picture of three of them back to back uh, on a rooftop. A damper. Uh, this happens to be a damper that's automatically controlled. It's a, a manually or automatically controlled device to regulate the draft or flow of air rate or combustion gases. So this can be opened at any angle uh, or closed totally. It depends on what the setting is. And here you see the automatic adjustment devices on the side here, which will allow that to move at whatever angle that you preset it for. The next thing we're going to talk about is a draft inducer. And basically a draft inducer is a fan uh, added to piping to help move the draft air for the purpose uh, through the appliance and then to the outside. So in other words, it just helps move the air and get the air up and outside. Uh, so this is a picture of a, a, a conduit, a flue, uh, with a fan on, mounted on the side of it. What it does is it sucks the air from the bottom and then pushes it up out the top. These are, these are terms that you may find on a report from your commercial um, company or your commercial expert that you have, your third party. Uh, so now you'll know exactly what the draft inducer, if he mentions that you have a bad draft inducer or something of that effect. Uh, next, we're going to talk about duct. Everyone knows what ducting is. Um, ducting is a tube or conduit for conveying air. So basically, here we've got some large duct work, um, vent and ducting, most of them ducting to the outside, this concrete wall here, going through the concrete wall. Um, ducts can be a number of sizes and different materials, but we're familiar with the ducts and what they are, what they do. A duct detector. Now, a duct detector, in this instance, is a uh, mounted on the side of a duct. Um, you can't quite see it from this picture, but there's a tube right here that goes through the duct and to the other side, which, with ha which has holes in it, and it senses any smoke or particulates in the, in the duct itself, and it will close a damper. Um, the technical term for a duct detector is a device inside the duct that detects smoke and, and uh, actuates a damper to close the airflow. In other words, when you've got any kind of particles in here, uh, or smoke in particular, this tube that runs through it, a piece of EMT or something with holes in it, will sense it in this area, let this know to close the damper. Um, it's part of the fire alarm system here. You'll see the fire detector here with lights on it. Um, this is red wire into the duct detector, and this, is, this goes back to the fire alarm panel. But um, you'll see them on HVAC systems. That's why it's here in the slide. Um, and, and the uh, HVAC technician or mechanic will put these in. They'll mount them on the ducts. And then the fire alarm people will probably tie them in to the side, the motherboard of the side that uh, does the reading and the sensing of the smoke or particulates in the draft. Electric heaters. Here's a couple different kinds of electric heaters. Electric heater basically is an appliance that provides heat, energy, to create a warm environment. So basically, you can plug them in. They're, they're heated. They have filters on them. Um, there's, these are some stand-up units. Um, there'll be different, uh, different kinds of units, different types of units. Uh, these just happen to be stand-up units. Energy recovery. Uh, energy recovery uh, ventilation system is the whole term. And this system is a, that employs air and air heat exchangers to recover energy from or reject energy to an exhaust air and remove from the building. And this is a kind of a diagram that shows air coming in, hot air coming in, going through the recovery core and bringing out cold air. Or on the other side here, it's a fresh cold air coming in from the outside and then going through the conductor, the energy recovery core, and bringing out warm air. So it depends on what it's doing, what it's set at, whether you're bringing in warm air, turning it into cool state indoor air, or bringing in cold, fresh air from the outside and making it warm, purified air to go into the unit. Evaporative cooling systems. 
Uh, evaporative cooling systems is a device used for producing heat of air by reducing heat of air, excuse me, reducing the heat of air by a cooling process of evaporation of water into the airstream. So what we do basically, uh, these are systems pretty much like the home evaporative coolers or swamp coolers where you have water going through a, uh, a filter and then air pushing out through the, the air, through the, through the filter. And it's evaporated air being pushed into the airstream. So basically the same situation only on a much larger scale. You can see the size of these ducts and vents um, and this equipment here. So basically evaporative cooling systems on commercial and industrial is the same but on a much larger scale. Um, this is an evaporator. Now evaporator is, the technical description of an evaporator, is uh, the part of the system in which liquid refrigerant is vaporized to produce refrigeration. So that's what this component right here does and that's, this is inside your cooling units. So this evaporator is part of all cooling systems and this part in particular is where liquid refrigerant is vaporized to produce the refrigerant that goes into the lines. Exhaust. Uh, we all know what exhaust is. The exhaust system happens to be an assembly of connected ducts, plenums, hoods, registers, fittings, pipes, um, through which air is taken from a space and exhausted to the outside. So it's used by different um, pipes, ducts, plenums, uh, registers, different things like that, taking the air from the inside and exhausting it to the outside. To help with that, we have exhaust fans. And these fans will generate a suction and blow out the exhaust air if they are uh, 50 feet long or different lengths, different sizes. They may need help getting them out. So the exhaust fan is basically a fan placed in a position to aid the exhaust process. So it may be at the bottom, pushing the exhaust out to the outer outside uh, or the outer vents or registers. Um, it could be halfway in between to where it's making the flow in a, in a continuous motion and getting the exhaust out of the building. Fireplace. We all know what a fireplace is. Basically a fireplace is a, uh, an assembly consisting of a hearth and non-combustible chamber where the fire is going. And uh, this one happens to have a hood. And then we have a chimney or a flue at the top to expel the... Uh, combustion gases and smoke. So this happens to be in a restaurant and you'll see these uh, in homes. Not a lot of freestanding ones in a home, but uh, this happens to be in a restaurant so you can walk around the entire thing. Basically, same, same thing. Uh, it's got a fluid chimney at the top, just like your home fireplace. It's a firing valve. And a firing valve is a valve of the plug and barrel type, which we've got shown here, uh, designed for the use with gas and equipped with a lever handle for manual operation and a dial to indicate the pressure of the opening. So all this is incorporated in a uh, firing, firing valve, firing mechanism for a uh, boiler, furnace, uh, whatever type of equipment that it's attached to. This is your firing valve. We're going to talk about filtered exhaust and basically filtered exhaust is an exhaust system usually on the roof like this one is um, that has a filter on it and the reason it's filtered is that the uh, warehouse or the commercial property may have uh, paint fumes or may have chemicals in there that need to be filtered before it's exhausted to the outside air. Uh, that way they uh, meets the EPA requirements and restrictions. Um, so basically what we've got here is a an exhaust system, a pipe coming in here, it's got a filter on it, goes through another chamber and then up and out, exhausted into the outside air. Uh, there's a door here and a hatch we can get in and remove the filter and change the filter. Uh, that's a maintenance person's position and a job, but basically you'll know if you see one of these that that's a filtered exhaust system. Uh, flu, we all know what flues are. Basically a pipe that expels the uh, combustion gases. 
out of a appliance, whether it be a boiler, whether it be a heater, whatever it might be. That's what these flues do, is they transmit, transport the air out to the outside, out of the building. Um, it's a passageway within a chimney or a vent through which gaseous combustion products pass. So basically that's what it is. It's a, it's a system or an avenue, a passageway to get stuff out of the appliance to the outdoor air. Furnace, we all know what furnaces are, but a commercial or an industrial furnace takes on whole new uh, meanings. This is a furnace right here. We have another furnace on this side. These are huge industrial furnaces uh, that could be gas fired. Um, basically, they are um, a completely self-contained heating unit uh, that is designed to supply heat to air in different spaces in different areas. So it depends on what kind of furnace it is, whether it uh, uses steam, you know, water, um, fuel, electricity, um, natural gas, uh, solid fuel, like I said. Depends on what kind of furnace we're talking about. But basically a commercial furnace is a huge furnace that can be uh, looked at and inspected by your third party inspectors or your commercial expert. It's a furnace room. Basically, in a big building or in an office building in particularly, you'll have a room where the furnace is in case there's noise or uh, workmen can get in here and work on it uh, in an area. You've got your gas piping. This happens to be a gas furnace. Um, you've got uh, a container tank over here, boiler tank or something. So this room is basically just for these appliances, whatever they might be in the furnace room. And basically, they're gas-fired appliances in the furnace room, um, primarily installed for fuel burning, space heating, and uh, water heating appliances. So that's what your furnace room is. Gas boiler, okay, we've got uh, piping coming in here. You can see there's the shutoff valve right there. These are gas boilers, and uh, their, their job is, uh, could be heating, could be uh, they're used for heating, or um, it just depends on what exactly the purpose that the boilers are used for. Um, in this in this instance, they look like they're for heat, but you can have them for uh, for energy processing, different things like that. But mainly, these two boilers are are for heat purposes. Uh, G is grease traps. We've got some grease traps in a hood here. These happen to be really dirty grease traps uh, that have to be changed periodically and you change the whole unit out. So you'll take that entire grease trap out and put a new one in. You don't reuse these or wash them or anything. They're, they're done after one use. You can see the separation here, which you can slide them in and slide them out. But this happens to be a really in need of changing the grease traps, but that's where they are. They're in your hoods that we talked about earlier, your exhaust hoods. Ground source heat. Uh, this diagram basically depicts ground source heating. Um, the technical term for ground source heating is piping buried in a horizontal and vertical excavations and placed in a body of water or placed in a body of water for the purpose of transporting heat, transfers liquid to and from a heat pump. So this goes to the heat pump, which pumps the heat into uh, either a containment or into an appliance that disperses the heat. So this diagram kind of depicts that uh, ground source heat pump system. And heat exchanger. This is a picture of a heat exchanger. Basically the heat exchanger is uh, a device that transfers heat from one medium to another medium. This happens to be a picture of a larger heat exchanger uh, that you'd find in an industrial uh, or larger commercial property. Heat pump. Uh, this is a picture of a heat pump, and the heat pump basically is a refrigerate in the refrigeration system uh, that extracts heat from one substance and transfers it to another portion of the same substance, or to a second substance at a higher temperature for beneficial purposes. So this pump transfers heat, either like I said, from the from one substance to the same substance, or from one substance to a second substance. Uh, basically what you're going to need to know 
not how they work or anything. Just we're showing you a picture of it to let you know what it is if you see it in a commercial or an industrial application and if it's mentioned on the third party report or your uh, commercial experts report, you'll know what it is, what it looks like. Infrared heaters. Here we've got some infrared heaters mounted up on this restaurant um, for outside patios, outside decks, things like this. Uh, in case it's chilly outside, these will let people still be able to sit outside and eat and enjoy the atmosphere. So these, these heaters, these happen to be uh, a bank of, of heaters uh, mounted across here. Infrared is the source of the heat. And uh, I think we have another picture of infrared heater. You can see how it's glowing red here. Here's the burners. Then you've got deflective wings on the side here where the heat comes up and deflects down. Where you'll see these a lot is in garages, uh, big warehouses over dock doors that the doors have to be open to unload or to load uh, products into trucks. And you get that cold blast, say it's snowing outside. That's where you'll see these line of heaters across the doors and reflecting heat straight down. These are infrared heaters. So you'll run across these a lot in commercial properties. Limit controller. A limit controller is a device responsive to changes in pressure, uh, temperature or level of, for turning on or shutting off or throttling up gas uh, in an appliance. So this determines what the pressure is or the temperature is and then it actuates and affects the appliance, whatever it might be, gas burning, um, whatever, whatever the changes in pressure or the temperature are, this will actuate a change in the appliance to give you more heat, uh, to back off the heat, whatever the case may be. That's a limit controller. Here happens to be a portable, movable limit controller that's mounted on wheels. Uh, you'll see them like this sometimes, or they'll be just mounted next to the furnace, the blower, the boiler, whatever it might be. Modular boiler, okay, these are, you can see a bank of them here, and a modular boiler is a steam or hot water heating assembly consisting of a group of individual boilers um, called modules and intended for the installed as a, as a unit with no stop valves. So in other words, all of these act as one unit. Uh, even though they're separate units, they're all interjoined and connected and they act as one big, huge boiler. Uh, they happen to be smaller. Some, sometimes they're a lot easier to work on. Uh, a maintenance person or a technician can get in behind and work on each one individually rather than one big, huge component that has to be craned into a building. Uh, they'll go to modular boilers like this. Oil-fired boiler. This is a picture of an oil-fired boiler. You've got the containment tank and the boiler. Um, the oil-fired boilers basically is, uh, is a boiler that uh, uses oil to, to produce heat um, or steam, whatever the case may be. Uh, this one's got a bunch of valves on it, so not exactly sure, but you can see that this one's sitting outside and mounted on a pad. Uh, it's not going anywhere, and I'm sure around here there's protection from it. There's ballards or something like that to keep any traffic from com coming in and hitting this boiler here. So you may run into one of these on your industrial or commercial property. So look for it. You'll know what it is. You'll know how to tell what it is because of the valves and the different piping and the big tank, the, the uh, cylinder tank. You'll know that it's oil fired. Uh, panel heaters. Uh, you may come across panel heaters in commercial properties, uh, mainly in office buildings or in uh, big conference rooms, uh, meeting rooms, things like that. These are just panels that radiate heat. Um, they're they're um, appealing to the eye. They uh, are easy to clean, easy to move. Um, they can be slid back and forth, heat different parts of the room. They fold up sometimes. Um, you may run into these. Um, that's what these are. These are panel heaters. Um, mainly in an office building, you can tell that we've got carpet and we've got a drop ceiling with some lights in there. So that's what this is, panel heaters. Uh, pellet or solid fuel uh, furnaces. These furnaces uh, take pellets. Uh, it's a closed combustion vented appliance equipped with a, a fuel-fed mechanism for burning processed pellets. 
um, and the or other solid fuels that is specifies specified the size and the composition of these pellets or this solid fuel whatever it might be um, that's what one of these processors is right here and that's what you've got the door that swings open you've got a feeder on it um, that's what this furnace is here is a solid fuel furnace pressure limit device uh, pressure limiting device is a device let's get the technical term here the pressure limiting device is a <coughs> A pressure responsive mechanism designed to stop automatically the operation of the pressure imposing element at a pre predetermined pressure. So there's a predetermined pressure on there and this mechanism will stop automatically the pressure building element, whatever that might be. So there's one installed on here and this happens to be a big uh, boiler type situation. So there's a pressure limiting device on here that won't let, won't let too much pressure build up in the device, whatever the device might be. But you'll run across this in commercial properties, industrial properties, and it will be mentioned, uh, your pressure limiting device, pressure limiting device, excuse me, is broken or out or malfunctioning. You might see that on a report from your third party. Then you got pressure relief valve. This is a good picture. This is a cross section of a pressure relief valve that's been cut in half. You can see the spring right here for the actuation. Uh, this is a uh, pressure release valve is a pressure actuated valve held closed by a spring and or other means designed to relieve pressure automatically in excess of the of the device's setting. And here again, you set the device, whatever it is, whether it's a pressure relief valve or the pressure limiting device from the slide before, there'll be a pressure set set on them so that when it achieves that pressure, it will relieve the excess pressure so it doesn't overbuild and cause an explosion of some type. So that's what the pressure relief valve does. Um, never test these. Never, never go over and open one or test them as they have extremely high pressure on them. Um, they would blow you over. They would cause extreme damage. So never go up to a pressure relief valve and open it to see if it's working uh, or a pressure limiting device. Either one of those. Never go up and check it to see if it's functioning. Uh, the, the pressure we're talking about is uh, extreme. So it's extremely dangerous to release the pressure out of one of these valves on some of these huge tanks that we're talking about. Some of these big pressures that we have built up. Uh, so never, never release one, never open one, never check it. Uh, just know what they are, uh, know where they are. Make a note of where they're located on the device. Um, and if it comes back in your report uh, from the third party person, say, oh, the pressure relief valve or the pressure limiting device, are they okay or, or whatever like that, if it's noted in your report. Purge, we all know what purge is, it's a purge valve with a handle on it. Uh, purging basically is the to clear air, water, or other foreign substances from a line. Um, and this can be done, as we see here in this valve, you turn it on, the pressure will blow out the, uh, the substances, the air, the water, um, the material that's in there, the sediment, or whatever it might be that's inside this component, pipe, device, whatever it is. Radiant heat. This happens to be a commercial property where you've got radiant heat, which each one of these lines, each one of these uh, tubes has heat or liquid in it, uh, whether, it be, um, whether it be water, whether it be a gel, whether it be a, uh, um, oh, some kind of material that is easily transmitted heat in. Uh, it depends what it is. But then you see this is before the pour and they're going to pour concrete over this. So this will be in the slab. Um, you'll have you know, heating elements in floors in homes sometimes. Uh, in a commercial application, this whole entire area is heated um, with this radiant heat system. Uh, you may find uh, uh, glycol in some of these. This is a fluid that's uh, used uh, that's a gelatin that can be heated and cooled 
without many problems. Um, depends on what's inside these tubes, what's inside these lines. Um, usually there'll be a, a, an agent in there, a fluid in there, a chemical in there, whatever it might be, um, that will easily transmit heat when activated and heat this floor up, whether it's constantly heated or whether it can be turned on and off, depending. But you'll see this type of floor in commercial properties. Uh, recirculated air. This is a, a fan and a blower uh, for recirculated air. Uh, recirculated air is air removed from a conditioned space and intended for reuse and supply air is what recirculated air is. Sometimes there'll be a filter in these recirculated air pumps um, that will filter the air before it is returned to supply air. Um, you can see the vent at the top here. Um, it comes in and then goes through a process here with or without a filter. It just depends on what the, the item or the device has on it. And then sent back to another conduit or duct that'll take it back for supply air. So these are just things that you need to know if they show up in a report. Uh, you need to know if you look at them what that is. Oh yeah, that's the uh, recirculating air vent or fan, pump, whatever it might be. Refrigerants. <clears throat> There's so many different kinds of refrigerants. Uh, basically the refrigerant is a substance utilized to produce refrigeration by the expansion or vaporization of the liquid or the component, uh, whatever it is, the gas, the refrigerant agent. Um, we've got them broken down into F -A -F -C -F HFCAs and HCFs. And on here, you can't read this, but it just describes what exactly these, uh, these tanks will hold. And this is what they come in, is different tanks. Sometimes different color tanks, like you've got here. Um, the color will indicate what type of refrigerant it has inside. Um, but basically, they've got a rating or a number on them. Um, we'll start over on this side. We've got R23, R134A, 104, 407, R407B, C, A, then we got 507, 508, R22, R123, R124, R401A, R401B, and R402A, R11, R22, R12, R13, R13B1, 113, 114. So, in other words, each one of these, and you can see the different colors. We've got green, we've got darker green, we've got purple, we've got uh, beige colored, we've got white tanks. So, it depends on what agent, what refrigerant you've got, that will dictate what the canister looks like and what it'll be labeled. Uh, what type of gas or refrigerant agent that you've got. Return air. Here's a diagram that basically shows what return air is. Um, return air is air that, that's removed from an approved uh, condition space or location and circulated or exhausted. So the return air basically goes through the space and then gets taken out or um, reconditioned and put back in as supply air. But the return air is basically air that uh, is recirculated or exhausted. And when they recirculate the air, it usually goes through a filter and contains it and, and stops any contaminants or any particles that's in that um, return air. There's a rooftop unit, okay? Um, basically, it's called an RTU. You'll see that uh, some mention in your report from your uh, commercial uh, expert uh, problems with the RTU uh, or some damage to an RTU. This is what they look like. Here's a couple of RTUs on top of a roof. Um, these happen to have some Unistrut uh, disconnects attached to them. Um, we got our seal tied along here, but basically if you open these up, they've got a big fan in there. Um, they're, mo they're for moving air. Um, we've got an exhaust vent on this side of it. Uh, these are exhaust vents coming through from the roof. But the rooftop unit can be used for heating or cooling, either one. And uh, they're usually located, of course, on the roof, but um, they're usually located in an area. There'll be a bank of them, usually on a huge commercial property. You'll see a row of RTUs set up. It's a smoke damper. Um, when and if there is smoke inside the vents or the ducts, 
Um, it's detected by a detection system. Usually your um, smoke damper will detect that and then the smoke damper will close off the entire vent uh, or duct or whatever it may be, your plenum. Um, so this is a picture with the closed vents on the smoke damper. I think we have another picture here of a smoke damper. For instance, we have a fire down in this portion, this level of a uh, office building. The smoke damper will close because the smoke damper will detect smoke inside the vent and it will close off these levels so smoke won't propel into this area and or perhaps up into this area and fill these areas with smoke. That's what the smoke damper does. It shuts off right here once it's detected and nothing above that or beyond that will be uh, infected with smoke. It will shut it off and contain it right there at that location. That's just an example of different floors and the duct system that you have running through here with the vents coming out of the ducts. Space heater. Space heaters are a little different than in residential um, that you put by the couch or in the living room or something. These are space heaters usually mounted up in an area uh, with Unistrut. This one happens to be with all thread coming down. This happens to be an electric space heater. Uh, but you can see the vents coming down here. It's used to basically heat a particular area. Um, usually you'll see in a warehouse or a big industry, industrial uh, opening, open space, uh, if somebody stands in one location, the person receiving will have a space heater in that area, blowing heat on that person with the dock doors open in case it's snowing outside like we talked about earlier with the radiant heaters um, or the infrared heaters. Basically, the heat will blow right on the person that's standing there checking in loads or shipping loads out, whatever it might be. That's a good place that you'll see a space heater in that location. Supply air. Basically, it's supply air. is air that's coming into the building, um, supplying the um, supply air is a air delivered to each or any space supplied by an air distribution system. And that's what we got a picture of here is this is the air coming in and filtered. There's a filter right here. Uh, and here's a fan, a blower that'll blow the air in the direction that it's necessary to go through the, the distribution system. Uh, this air is provided for venting, heating, cooling, humidification, dehumidification, and other similar purposes. So in other words, this air coming in, the, su the supply air, comes in and supplies the area after it's been conditioned, whatever that conditioning may be, um, filtered and blown into that space. That brings us to vent. Um, there's so many different kinds of vents. Um, B vents, um, side vents, horizontal vents, vertical vents. Um, just There's a whole video series on probably vents and venting. Uh, basically, though, in an HVAC, commercial HVAC, a vent, as we can see in this picture, we've got a couple of vents here. We've got three of them that we can see in this picture. A vent is a pipe or other conduit leading to the outside that carries combustion product or air um, and air. So basically what we've got is the exhaust fans and the exhaust system that takes the exhaust from the appliance to the outside. Um, also venting uh, for, for uh, other apparatuses and other appliances. Combustion products that are in there have to be emitted to the outside. That's what the vent is. Basically, we're gonna stop there. We're not gonna go into all the different kinds of venting at this point in time. So that's what vents are, and that's what they look like on a roof. Um, it's really hard to tell the difference between plumbing vents and HVAC vents, vents coming from an appliance uh, that transferring combustion air and combustion products out to the atmosphere um, as opposed to plumbing vents. Normally though there'll be um, one, one easy way is uh, the plumbing pipes, the plumbing vent pipes will be black, usually ABS pipe, black or white pipe um, and these may be uh, gray uh, or metal, it depends on what, what it is but uh, that's one quick easy way that you can tell the difference but they look the same they penetrate through the roof the same, so it's hard to tell. And that comes into a whole other section on venting, which we'll get into later. Uh, venting system. A venting system is a 
system of different vents and here we've got some penetrating the roof here again a continuous opening passageway from the flue collar of an appliance to the outside so basically the venting system is the means of getting the combustion out of the building whether it be ducts plenums um, you know could be duct inducers with fans on them as we talked about earlier um, here's a fan at the top of a vent sucking the exhaust fumes and the vent uh, combustion air out of the building or the structure. So it just depends on what you're going to run into, uh, what kind of vent that you'll have, what kind of system it is on the commercial property that you're inspecting. Uh, just know these terms, know what these are, um, look at them so that when you go to a commercial property or an industrial property you can see these things and refer to them and say I've seen that in the definitions video I know what that is that's this item or this device and if you see it on a report from your third party uh, commercial inspector or commercial expert you'll know what it is and note where it is uh, get it in their report and make notes of it um, you'll be able to get your way through your inspection and as a facilitator much easier and in a better fashion. So thank you very much. That brings us to the end.